You may wonder, how do I get rid of those lines that are on top of my forehead or around my eyes? Well, many of you have heard about Botox, but how does Botox work and is it the right solution for you? Well, coming up next in my Ask Your Doctor series, I'm here with Dr. Amy Miller. Dr. Miller, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So we've heard about Botox. Yes. And then I've also heard about fillers. Right. So first of all, what is Botox and how does it work? Okay, there is a lot of confusion out there between Botox and fillers. Botox is a, a neuromodulator. So what it does is it inhibits the nerve from telling the muscle to contract. So what does that have to do with lines? Well, the lines on our face often are dynamic lines, meaning they are from muscle contraction. So when you raise your brows to look quizzical or, <laughs> or concentrating and trying to look stern, you contract muscles in your forehead. Yeah, we've seen those lines where there's just like a line right here right. or there's lines across right. here. So what the Botox does is inhibits that muscle from contracting and then the skin can literally heal itself. The, the skin stays smooth and then the body starts laying collagen down in those lines and they gradually get softer and fade away. So when is the best time for someone who has lines to start to use this type of treatment, use Botox? when they see a line at rest. When you're not contracting the muscle and there's a faint line there, that's the perfect time to start because we can erase that line that's there and prevent it from getting any deeper. The longer you go, the deeper the lines get, the harder it is to get rid of them. And sometimes they get so deep that Botox doesn't take care of it and then we have to bring in another tool out of the toolbox, something called filler or dermal fillers, where we actually replump the area. I know that there are also lines that come around the face, that come down the side. Can you treat that with Botox? Botox in general is not great for the lower half of the face. Now, there are some caveats to that. I like it for a little perioral lines, a little smoker lines around the mouth. But any of the nasolabial folds or any of this jaw area generally is not a great idea. So that's where filler comes into play. Um, generally with aging, we used to think that it was gravity. That, that gravity was pulling and everything was falling down. And that's true to, to a certain extent, but... The law of gravity has hit my face. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but we now know that in addition to gravity, there's other forces at work and we're losing volume, we're deflating. We lose volume in the skin and in the, the muscle and in the fatty tissue and even in the bone. When you look at an aged skeleton versus a younger skeleton, you can see that bone shrinkage. So really what the filler is doing is replacing that volume where we're, we're blowing the balloon back up. So it's giving you that youthful look that you used to have. Uh, I know uh, there's docs out there who like to change people's looks with fillers. We don't, I don't like to do that. I just like to bring them back to what they used to have. So is filler something that is permanently inside the face or is it something that, that fades? Most of the ones that are available on the market are ones that fade. Uh, the most popular are Restyl and Juvederm. Those last six months to a year. Um, there's uh, ones that last one to three years and there's also a filler that's available that lasts five to ten years. So we have your whole spectrum and generally if you want to put your toe in the water and try it out, I'll go with the six month one. But if you know you want some improvement and you don't want to have to come back, then I like to go to the five to 10 year one. Some powerful strategies for wrinkle reduction. Dr. Amy Miller, thank you for being here with us on Ask Your Doctor.